Hi, my name is Dr. Rob Rosbrook from the Hospital for Special Surgery and what I'd like to discuss with you today is limb deformity correction using internal fixation. Essentially what we are discussing here is acute correction of limb deformity and insertion of either a plate or a intramedullary rod to acutely correct deformity. The question always is when do you do this type of deformity correction as opposed to gradual deformity correction using external fixation? And the reality is is that there are different indications for different um, problems. In general, deformity corrections are better tolerated acutely in the femur than they are in the, in the tibia or lower leg. And in general, smaller deformity corrections are tolerated better than a large deformity corrections. So there is definitely a place for acute deformity correction using internal fixation, and that's what we're gonna to discuss today. The real focus of this um, presentation is a preoperative patient education session for a patient who is about to undergo acute deformity correction with internal fixation. When we talk about acute deformity correction with internal fixation, in general, I am discussing an osteotomy done of the femur or the tibia and fixation after acute correction uh, with either a plate and screws or an intramedullary rod, again, depending on the details. The bottom line is the patient comes in with a deformity. They wake up after surgery with the deformity completely corrected in one shot during the surgery and stabilized on the inside with internal fixation. That is either with a plate and screws or with an intramedullary rod. So a couple of examples. So if a patient has a bow leg deformity, for example, and it is less than 10 degrees and it's not complex, there's no sagittal plane deformity, there's no significant rotational deformity, then acute deformity correction with a proximal tibia osteotomy, um, open wedge, and insertion of a plate may be done. Another example would be if a patient has a valgus deformity or knock knee deformity and after analysis it turns out that the source of the deformity is the femur, the apex of the deformity is often a couple of inches just above the knee, we will do a, an osteotomy of the distal femur about two inches above the knee, acute deformity correction again with an open wedge technique and insertion of a plate with bone grafting of the open wedge. A third example might be a correction of a diaphyseal deformity that is sort of the mid part of the bone that may have occurred from a congenital for a congenital reason or may have occurred for a developmental reason or may have occurred after a previous trauma. But we would do an acute deformity correction and insertion of an intramedullary rod to stabilize the deformity. In general, these operations are done uh, with an epidural anesthetic, which means general anesthesia is not necessary. The patients are not awake and they feel nothing. The usual amount of time for an operation like this would be approximately one and a half to two hours. The blood loss is minimal and there's usually no need for a blood transfusion. Um, sometimes the surgeries are done through very, very minimal incision techniques and that's often the case with uh, acute correction and insertion of an intramedullary rod. Sometimes a, an incision uh, approximately four to five inches needs to be done um, if we are inserting a plate for a deformity correction. The patients typically stay in hospital for about um, one to two days after such a surgery. The pain is very well controlled postoperatively with a uh, patient controlled analgesia pump. Um, and physical therapy is started also the day after surgery. We typically will get patients up, um, walking with crutches, and starting out with a partial weight-bearing type of situation. We encourage movement to the knee and the ankle immediately after surgery. In most cases, a brace or cast is not necessary after such an operation. And in most cases, by around six weeks, the patients are able to bear full weight and start coming off of crutches. So there's usually enough bone healing after six weeks that you can come off your crutches. After surgery, you'll be in very little pain because we have a, an excellent um, pain care team, a group of anesthesiologists who specialize in post-operative pain care. 
and you'll have um, either an epidural anesthesia that stays in for post-op pain care or a PCA, a patient-controlled analgesia pump. That typically goes on for the first 24 hours after surgery and then we transition you to oral pain medication and that is typically enough. Patients usually leave hospital with a, a low-level narcotic and they're usually able to wean off of this within a period of about two weeks. Typically, you will be quite mobile. There's no need for a cast and there's not even a need for a brace. We do have patients get up the first day after surgery using crutches and you'll be partial weight bearing. That situation will continue for about six weeks after surgery. We will encourage you to bend your knee and bend your hip and bend your ankle and move around. So you'll be very mobile. There will be a need for crutches, but there'll be no need for a cast and in most cases, not even a need for a brace. Most patients will have complete healing of the osteotomy by around three months. So patients usually come off their crutches after six weeks. They transition to sort of a full, full weight bearing, full activity situation between six weeks and three months. And they're typically walking normally at three months. You'll typically be back to 100% after about six months following surgery. With acute deformity correction using internal fixation, there is less responsibility for the patient than with external fixation. You don't need to clean pin sites. You don't need to do a fixator adjustments. So in that sense, it makes it easier. However, the two main responsibilities that you have are number one, physical therapy. It's really important to, to work on knee motion, hip motion, and ankle motion to maintain your mobility. The second really important uh, restriction is weight-bearing precautions. We, we advise you exactly how much weight we want you putting on the leg. Typically, you're in a, fifth, you're a uh, partial weight-bearing situation with not more than about 30 pounds of weight for the first six weeks after surgery. That can vary from case to case. Often with an, with an intramedullary rod, I'll let patients be 50% weight-bearing. With a plate, I will typically restrict weight-bearing to 30 pounds for the first six weeks. But after six weeks, there's usually enough healing that you can come off your crutches and progress to a weight-bearing as tolerated situation. So if you notice this patient has a bow leg deformity, and when you look at the x-ray, you can see that there's this large multi-apical bow of the femur that has created this deformity. Now, this is the front view of the femur. This is the side view of the femur. And you'll notice really on both views, there is this gradual bow of the deformity. When I do that and that and that, it is apparent that there are two apices of deformity, right? It's not just one place, but two places. So my plan is to cut the bone in this location and in this location and correct the deformity. And here you see the rod in place, the two osteotomies here, and here on the front view that have been corrected and healed at this point. So again, we went from that multi-apical varus deformity on the front view and this large procravatum deformity to a straight bone fixed with an intramedullary rod after making two osteotomies. Hi, John. Good morning, doctor. How are you? How you doing? Nice to see you. I think I'm doing good. Good, good. It's been about six weeks since the surgery right. to uh, straighten out the left femur. Looks good to me. So you're not taking any more pain medication? No. How long did you need pain medication after the surgery? The prescription, at most a week, and I never took the whole dose. When we do an acute deformity correction, and it's very typical that the pain kind of, you know, works itself out pretty quickly. So um, you've been using the crutches yep. with the partial weight bearing for the past six weeks um, and I'm anticipating that today we're going to make the transition to let you start doing full weight bearing. Yay. <laughs> but we'll look at the x-rays together and make sure everything is looking okay. Okay, so you've got full extension, that's great. And bend your knee, wonderful. You've got your really full, full range of motion of the knee. Your um, surgical incision which is about five to six inches, is really nicely healed. Um, tighten up this muscle and this one. Things are coming along really nicely. Your muscle strength is a little bit weaker on this side still, so 
physical therapy is going to be really important at this point to kind of take you to the okay. next level. So what I'm seeing when I look at you standing is that the, um, the knock knee deformity on the left side has been really nicely corrected. The right knee still has the, the knock knee and we'll deal with that at a later time um, when, uh, when we decide that we're going to do the you, the left leg, which is my operator leg, is much more stable right now than my right leg. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, and that's really, yeah, that's, that's kind of what I expect when we, when we correct that deformity. Once the leg is nice and straight, it feels much more stable. It does. And it's going to, you know, it looks great. It's going to feel much, much better because the forces are really evenly distributed and it's going to really prevent the progression of the arthritis. And I'll point out some of those things on the x-ray as well. Walk over there. Yeah, come on over here. Perfect. I like the way you're walking. And, and right now, you know, I've had you partial weight bearing, but I'm really going to allow you to transition to full weight bearing. As you have this deformity, you're overloading the outside part of the knee, and that really puts you at risk for developing arthritis and progressive pain. Believe me, I experienced it. Well, I've known I've been knock kneed my whole life, and I just put up with it. I actually ran the marathon in 85, so, you know, it always limited me. I couldn't ice skate, I couldn't, anything that required my leg, my feet to be parallel, I couldn't do. But as I got older, it began to cause arthritis and I started having tr not tr pain walking. I actually thought my limbs were different lengths. I didn't connect it with the knock knees, but I had heard of Dr. Rosbrook and I came here because he's famous for limb lengthening and he said that's not the issue the knock knees are and so that's what happened. You can see this is the open wedge so this is just kind of at this point this is an open space it's hinged it's a partial cut in the bone it's not cut fully and the black here is the plate and screws holding the position and this gets bone grafted we put in a synthetic type of bone graft. I'm very active I ride horses I swim I take long walks I'm an active kind of guy I play golf badly <laughs> And um, I'm young enough still to want to have some good years, and yeah, I, was, I, I needed to deal with it. Okay, this is the x-ray today, six weeks after surgery, and you can see that that wedge is really filling in beautifully. And you see it's exactly where we want it. It's slightly overcorrected. This is very much a normal situation, and so this really optimally unloads the lateral side. I went to a local orthopedist and said, what's going on here? I can't walk properly. And um, the answer I got was, there's nothing wrong with you. We can give you a shot. Seriously. And, uh, you know, that just didn't satisfy me. And I finally found my way to Dr. Rosbrook. And I'm glad I did, obviously. So let's meet back in about uh, two, three months. Right. And um, we'll repeat the x-rays, make sure every, the healing is coming along. And I, got, I don't have any choice now. i got to do the other way. You, you, at some point, you, yes, you, you're going to want to do the other leg, but the timing is really, we'll decide that together, but you will want to do the other okay. leg. Thank you so much. Great seeing you.